The Year of Miss Agnes by Kirkpatrick Hill. Chapter four. All the kids looked different that first day too, like something good was going to happen. It was early October and the river was just slushing up and there hadn't been hardly any snow, so all the kids were there. After freeze up, lots of them would go to winter camp to track with their folks and would be there till Christmas. There was me and Bertha and the big boys, Jimmy, Sam and Roger and little Pete and the littlest ones, Selena and Charlie boy and the middle ones, Kenny and Plasker, Toby Joe too, and Marie. She was the only big girl. Me and Boko were mostly the only ones who stayed in town all winter. That was because we didn't have a dad. He died when we were little. They sent him to a hospital for people who had TB in Juneau. That's really far away, but he didn't get better. We have a picture of him tacked on the wall at home. It was when he went to Nulato one time. There was this priest there who had a camera and he took lots of pictures of everyone. There's my dad leaning against the wall of the old store with a bunch of other guys. He was real young then. He has this kind of old time hat, squashed up like. All the guys in the picture do too. Mama said that's the kind of hat they wore then, back in the twenties. He has on those old kind of summer moccasins, the long kind that wrap up your leg a little ways. I know his mama made those for him. She died before I was born, so she never knew about me and Boko. My dad's looking at the camera and he's laughing with his eyes all squinched up. Boko looks like that when she smiles too. I think he was a really happy kind of guy. That's what everyone says, always joking. If he hadn't died, there would have been more laughing in our house. Mama is not the laughing kind. Mama works for old man Anderson at the store, cleaning and doing the washing and all of that. And she does sewing to sell, boots and mitts and martin hats. She sews really good. She never stops working. If she isn't at the store, she's home baking bread, making duck soup, or cooking ptarmigan, or whatever we have to eat that day. And when that's finished, she'll take out her sewing. Mama thinks working hard is what everyone's supposed to do. And so she thinks school is just a waste of time. Grandpa runs a little trap line out of the village and he gives Mama skins from the marten and rabbits he traps to make hats and mittens. And sometimes he gets a wolverine for ruffs, the fur trim around the hood. Wolverine is best for that because it doesn't frost up like other fur. It's a lot of work, sewing. First, she has to scrape those skins with a special little knife until they're soft and there's no fat left on them. Then she washes them and hangs them up to dry on the line by the door. Not too near the stove or they'll dry too fast. While they're drying, she keeps twisting the skins so that they won't dry stiff. Me and Boko have to do that part, mostly. Mama makes mittens out of lots of different kinds of skins. Otter and Wolf are good ones, and she gets a lot of money for those. The mittens have long braided harnesses, so you can tie the mittens up behind you, so they won't get in your way if you're working, and so they won't get lost. Those harnesses are made of three different bright colors of yarn, and they're prettier than anything you ever saw. They have big pom-poms on them for decorations. Mama gets me and Boko to wrap the yarn around a piece of cardboard about a million times to make those pom-poms fat enough. We get tired doing it, but in the end, when Mama cuts the ends and fluffs them out, they look so pretty. She makes boots from caribou legs. Caribou is very warm, and the leg of the caribou is just the right shape already. When you skin the leg out, you just cut it carefully down the front and there's a fur tube just right for boots. Mama makes an insole of caribou fur for inside the boots too. And at the top of the boots, she sews on a beautiful band she makes with beads. She always makes flowers on her bands. 
Grandma says in the old days, they made the design on the bands with porcupine quills. You have to flatten the porcupine quill with your fingernail, and then you sew it flat to the band. Oh, first you dye the quills different colors. I'd like to see that kind of band, but no one makes it anymore. Too much work, I guess. They use beads instead. There's a lot of stuff they don't make anymore that my grandma tells me about, like the rabbit skin underwear she had when she was little. Long ago, you only wore what the women could make, but now people have got catalogs in the store. Mama doesn't make our parkas. She always orders them from the Sears Roebuck catalog because she thinks making parkas is too much trouble. Grandma doesn't like that ordering stuff. She grumbles at Mama and Indian and calls her lazy. Grandma would make parkas for us herself, but she doesn't sew very much anymore because her eyes are going bad. It doesn't seem like her eyes are bad because she sees everything me and Boko and Mama do, but that's what she says. Grandma makes the sinew thread for sewing out of that big hump on the back of the moose, and she tans the moose hide with rotten moose brains. Boy, does that smell bad. She's the one who taught me and Boko to knit and to sew. Mama doesn't have patience for it. She always yells at us when we do something wrong. And then Grandma will frown at her and say, Sequoia, in this way she has, and put her arms out to us. That means grandchild. Grandma and Grandpa are too old to go out to camp much. So they stay in town all winter too. They didn't have any sons, only mama, so it's bad for them that way. There's too much hard work at the trap line for just women and one old man. There's Martin trapping in the winter, and after Christmas, people go back out to their winter trapping camps for beaver. Spring camp, when people hunt muskrats, is just before the snow melts, and then we have fish camp in the summer. We all go to fish camp, me and Boko and Mama and sometimes Grandma and Grandpa too. That's because all our cousins and aunts and uncles go there too, so there's not so much work. We can all take turns, like. Grandpa misses going out trapping, but he says he gets more money making snowshoes than he would trapping anyway. Old man Anderson buys those to sell in Fairbanks and other places. And he says he could sell as many as Grandpa could turn out because Grandpa's snowshoes are made of birch, so they're real light on your feet. First, Grandpa has to get just the right kind of birch. It has to be straight with no knots. Then he soaks that birch in water until it's soft, just right to tie onto the snowshoe frames. After they're ready to come off the frames, Grandma fills in the insides of the snowshoes with those rawhide strips she makes from moose hide. It's really hard to fill those snowshoes, all crisscrossed like a spider web. I want to learn how. There were lots of things we could learn at home, but I liked the stuff we learned at school too. And I wanted to get good at reading so I could read fast like old man Anderson. When the paper comes in the mail from Fairbanks, he reads out loud in the store to everyone and he goes so fast everyone tells him to slow down. I'd like to read that fast. So mostly I was glad we got to stay in town all winter.